with Dr. Barbara Kovitska. How are you doing today? Uh, very well, thank you very much. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about you, your life, your work, your journey, because you've got a fascinating life, because on the one hand you're a doctor, mm -hmm. you help people look good, feel good, mm -hmm. but you're also a racer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. I would say that I live my dream. Right. Well, that's interesting. So you live your dream, but you also help people, I guess, with their dreams. So tell me a little bit about about your work. For people who don't know your work, we're here at your clinic in the heart of London. Um, and tell us a little bit, in, in essence, what it is that you do and how it is that you help people. Uh, so I'm a doctor, I'm a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously I finish medicine and work in hospital and had experience um, in this settings, in this um, mm -hmm. environment. Uh, but what I was always passion, pas passionate is the visual, artistic side right. of a human body. Which is so different, isn't it? Because we often think about the, the medical side, the internal, how somebody's you know, doing that and that stuff. But then the other side is very important. And we don't hear about it much when we think about medicine. We yes. don't think about that much. Mm -hmm. And why was it that that side was it that interested you? Was it because you knew that that's what's important to people, as well as all of the, of course, how we physically are feeling and fixing, if you like, and yeah. keeping things going. Was it, was it because of that? It, obviously, that's one of the, yeah, one of the reasons mm -hmm. why. And as well, being a woman myself, I know how important it is for me. And in my journey, I struggle with a lot of issues and being self-conscious, not having enough confidence. And all of that uh, obviously was connected with, with the appearance and the look. Right. But as well, on the other hand, I'm really passionate about art. Right. And I studied interior design and that was something that I found um, really absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. that I can do the same mm -hmm. on the human body. Yeah? I can, right. the face or the body can be my... Yes. Piece of art. Yeah. Wow, that's just incredible. You know, that's really incredible, and I guess <clears throat> it's very relevant for where we are now because I guess we're in an in an era where how we look and how we feel is, uh, is very very important mm -hmm. to us. And as you said, it's very important. I guess particularly women and girls, particularly that that element is especially important from when we from when we grow up and so on need your image and so on. I guess you've got to balance this very carefully, isn't it? Because you were talking before about the self-esteem and so on. So what's your, what's your approach of, of, about this? Because you're a medical doctor and you help people in terms of the look and the feel and so on. What's your, what's your starting point when somebody comes to you and they say, you know, you know, Barbara, I'm not, doctor, I'm not, I'm not happy. I feel as I could look better at the skin, the appearance. The, 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 what's your whole philosophy ar around that? Because I would imagine that there are some things that we can do something about mm -hmm. and some things that we can't. So tell me a little bit, what's your philosophy and what's your approach so to this? So the most important is to see human being as whole. Right. So obviously we have our physical body, yeah. we have our mind and there were all thoughts and self-esteem seats, but as mm -hmm. well there is this, this spirit inside, right. which I... There is everything uh, that really matters in, in person mm -hmm. since. Uh, and first, in, first thing for me is to have a connection with person. Mm -hmm. yeah? So whenever whoever comes, we have a consul con it's called consultation mm -hmm. where I try to find out what how they see themselves, mm -hmm. what they struggle with, mm -hmm. what they would like to change. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I assess meantime the physique mm -hmm. because that's like side of uh, it's. it's that it's easy part, but mm -hmm. it's the most important. It's to adjust to, to understand what how they feel about themselves, mm -hmm. what is really the core of the problem, mm -hmm. and then uh, I always obviously then address the start with addressing the issues that they have. Mm -hmm. But it's usually a starting point of conversation about changing their mindset, mm -hmm. because very important is for me to mm -hmm. work with. Patients who have the right attitude. Yeah. Well, that's magical to hear to start off with because if we think of <clears throat> some fields of where people will be having changes done to them uh, and so on, and perhaps more um, marked type of surgery and so on, very often um, it's because of all the mindset stuff that's holding them back. So it's wonderful to hear that you're actually wanting them from day one to have the right kind of mindset about themselves. It's very interesting because procedure can change 
they left here yeah, because mm -hmm. some people are uh, they self it's like it's like a starting point yeah mm -hmm. because they suddenly see themselves in different way but it's only a starting point right. yeah. or can be a tool for something for much bigger change transformation that happens inside right so what you're saying is very powerful so you're saying that when I have the procedure um, that can be a starting point and of course it's a tool that we've addressed um, something so I will, I will be more pleased with what, I, what I've seen and so, and so if I do my teeth or something like that mm -hmm. But that's a starting point, and that might encourage me if I've got the right mindset into other things I might want to change. So again, yes. is this why this is holistic? Yeah. To me, this sounds. I'm sure that there would be some people in your field who do this, but this sounds like quite a refreshing kind of a, a, a approach mm -hmm. because I might just imagine I'm going to book an appointment, mm -hmm. and then we're going to see what we can do, and so on. Tell me a little bit about what's the scope of the work that you do here in the clinic? What's the range of the kind of procedures that you do and the kind of range of the procedures that, 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 you, that you don't do? Tell us a little bit about that. So yeah. we are uh, we're based on uh, what we offer based on non-invasive right. uh, procedures. So they are all injectable. So that covers things like dermal fillers, um, obviously botulinum toxin, mm -hmm. some skin, a lot of skin care. Right. Uh, so that with the dermal roller, mesotherapy, right. um, uh, PRP, all chemical peels. So these are all kind of peels. They're the things that so they're the range from the chemical peels that may well um, help us in terms of the, with the skin or cleaning or freshening the skin through to the Botox and things like that that may well help. So it's, I would probably put it into the groups. Mm -hmm. It's the big group. It's anti-aging. Yeah? Right, so right, obviously yeah. all procedures for the face and the body as well and the hair right. that address the aging process. Right. Yes. Yeah? So slow it down or make it look make it best for the mm -hmm. individual. Uh, there is the second uh, big group of uh, procedures that which we in which we address medical problems, mm -hmm. whether it's acne, right. whether there is excessive sweating, right. whether it's um, rosacea, or the mm -hmm. quite active hair loss. So mm -hmm. that's that's the that's a part of 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 the treatment. Once again, we use the tools right. like from the lasers to, to the newest technologies to treatments, medications, whatever it's suitable for the for the individual. Awesome. And then finally the one that are purely beautification. Mm -hmm. So I mean in that whether there is a lip reshaping, whether right. there is the change of, of shape of face or, or cheeks or, or just weight loss for mm -hmm. example as well, which is as well can be medical mm -hmm. but can be as well purely purely aesthetic. Wow, know? so there's a there's a really rich range of stuff mm -hmm. here. From anti-aging, as, as you're saying, to some of the more classic medically related yeah. um, things, through to the, the range, which is I guess where there's a lot of scope, because I'd imagine between the, the reshaping to mm -hmm. through to um, uh, then the, the stuff shaping, of body yeah. shaping, which might be for a mixture of diet a, a, as mm -hmm. well. I mean, this is fascinating yeah. work, and I can see why um, how. The thing that you were talking before about the um, your interest in the the human being is art, but I like the way that it, you combine that with a real consciousness about the spirit too. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because art is also about our spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Very and interesting, yeah. And it's, uh, and it's as well. Um, it's not about the procedure; it's about the process. So I always, I always want to meet with patients for the first time. I always say that it's not about one of it's about I'm interested in relationship. I'm interested right. in taking them through daily life, yeah? right. to teach them how to take care of themselves, right. to teach them how to have a good approach towards their body, right. how to respect their body, how to take care of themselves. Right. And through this there's a lot of healing happening. Right. Because with every therapy there is an element of yeah of healing right. and and allowing and allowing your oneself to be looked after. That's really powerful, I think, what you're saying, because I'd imagine over that journey, somebody might first of all come in and they have a consultation, and I'd imagine that sometimes the consultation itself might be quite mm healing, -hmm. yeah. isn't it? Because somebody is able to open up to you, or maybe they think about this, or I'm feeling this, and I'm feeling that, and you're perhaps getting them to already begin to think about how they feel about themselves. And then I guess you might start off with some particular treatments, 
And then all of a sudden, then we're into the stuff about my overall general health and um, my diet and lifestyle. things that my lifestyle. So it, it must become, it does become quite a journey for them. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And that's probably the most satisfying for me to right. see them transforming, to see right. the change. Obviously, the outside change is very satisfying mm -hmm. as well because you can see the results. Yeah. 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 But the way that the most satisfying is the, the, the internal change yeah. and the way, yeah, the, the confidence, the attitude towards like the happiness and trust as well because that's very important that through the healing process or through uh, finding the place that they can relax and be looked mm -hmm. after they start to build trust towards other people or future that's you know that's 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 really interesting because i guess there are all these different areas of their life that this the benefits can flow into i want to talk a little bit about the aesthetic and you touched on this before you know you were saying you know you yourself you know you've Wrestle with those challenges. Now, lots of people watching this might think, oh my goodness, what's she got to worry about? She looks amazing, she's this, she's young, and all the rest of that. So they might let themselves be amazed to feel that this is a challenge. And I think there's a, what they call, you know, kind of paradox in this, because I guess we're in a time now where lots of people might be young. You know, lots of if we look at on TV, the beauty treatments, even the, you know, the models and so on are in their 20s or their 30s, and then we're already talking about anti-aging. Mm -hmm. And I guess that based around here, there are lots of people who's maybe even their work or the lifestyle requires that they've got, or they feel they've got to look good. And I would imagine you also get some young people who they may well look good, but they don't feel that they look good. Yeah. So what's your, this must come up a lot in your work. Uh, what's your starting point? Because this is complex, isn't it? Oh, it is, this, that's probably the most difficult part, right. to have to find the right balance. Right. Because uh, with, um, with, the, with all procedure, it's, I always say it, it's like with going to hairdresser. Yeah? You can go and you can use it to benefit yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can go and bleach your hair blonde mm -hmm. and look horrendous, mm -hmm. overdo it, yes. and or be obsessed with that, that you, mm -hmm. have to, you have to keep doing mm -hmm. things or you want to keep changing. Mm -hmm. It's, that's the reason why I think it's important, uh, my role or our role as a clinic mm -hmm. is important because we need to guide you know, the person yes. yeah. because we, you, we, you see yourself from very close mm -hmm. up perspective, you need somebody from outside to be able to say when it's right, when it's not. What is okay, what is a little bit too much. Yeah. What you're saying already is really interesting because I guess this is where all your skills come into play. Because you've got this and um, wonderful the fact that of course there's the medical um, grounding mm -hmm. and having worked in hospitals for the rest of it, you you're aware of all of the stuff that the medical stuff that, that the, the baseline if you if you like. But because you're mindful about the aesthetic and so on, and um, you're aware of the aspiration that mm -hmm. we have to look good, to feel yeah, and good. Yeah, it's important. It is. We are. Yeah. We, we do live <laughs> in the environment in the nowadays in the age when. Everything is based on image. Mm. People before even listening to anybody, they they look, yeah. they judge. Yeah? yeah, it's all based on pictures. People don't really even read much yeah. because they yeah, they yeah. prefer the picture. Right. And it's and it's very very important, and especially in the places places where um, people who are high achievers mm -hmm. or are in the media or in the mm -hmm. they, they, there's a lot of pressure. And presumably are these some of the people who come to you, are some of the people who come to you presumably um, they may perhaps I would imagine that they um, they may have a higher power of jobs, they might want to look good, um, perhaps there may well be uh, some of the people who are, who are well known or they're well yeah. known in their fields and so on, so looking good. At least some of these people come to you. Yeah, that's exactly it that's a that's the majority of, right. of our, of our right. patients, but it's for everybody. Right. It's uh, the, probably the most the most difficult is to allow oneself yes. to do it, yeah? right. because they see that it's, it's done. Other people use it, but they feel inside that they are not worth it. Oh, so for for so for anybody who might just want there might be just some things that they could use just to help. You know, maybe I've been sat with acne or for a particular challenges or particular things for a long period of time I might feel looking in this is for somebody else because I might even be yeah. uh, intimidated or come going to the doctor yeah. and they're, they're, yeah. they're based in the heart of London yeah. that's not for me I'm exactly. just this ordinary person yes. 
But, if, but does that even happen sometimes for people who are high achievers? Yes, sometimes absolutely. that they still feel yes, alive. Especially that happening with the anti aging. Right. Because there is obviously there is this big group of people who are very proactive in that, yes. yeah. And also almost obsessive about mm -hmm. it. Which is wrong, mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a even bigger group of people who would like to right. but they because they've seen things that were went wrong yes. or because of public opinion yeah. or because of fear yeah. they don't allow themselves to go yeah. and seek advice and right. and be looked after. Well what you're saying here is really um, fascinating. I know we're running out of time here but I could speak to you all day because you've just opened this um, a huge area for us to be mindful of. It's, it's an area whereby um, I mean, like, it's even way to. St I mean, I'm looking forward to perhaps us doing a talk specifically on um, where we are with um, what kind of procedures we we undertake yeah. as a species, and your take on that. So, how we can do that kind of mindfully. Yeah. What's your take on? What's your take on that then? So, you've got on the one hand the individual self-esteem, all of these kind of things that I need to be mindful of and you're saying you've got to take this holistic approach that's making me really think. And then you've got from the other side the industry of all of the range of procedures that we can have done. Um, tell me what's your take as the medical profession? Um, where, sh where sh do we need to sit with all this? I know it's a very, very big question given that there's more we can do to enhance somebody's appearance. Um, but we need to also be aware of where they might be. What's your what's your take on this? And that's a very big yeah, question. Yes. It, it is big enough. There are a few things in that um, in that question mm -hmm. that should be addressed. The most important is um, there is overwhelming amount of products, procedures, things in the market and in in industry right. uh, that needs to be filtered and need to be filtered by a professional or a person who can do the research and know that he can make the decision based on the knowledge and should this, and it's not always the new treatment it's sometimes quite old yeah but yeah well tested yeah, and used for a long time so we have all combination of things but that's 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 very very important and sometimes um i'm a bit uh, sometimes it makes me angry because obviously we have a lot of people coming and trying to sell we very yeah all sorts of all things. All sorts of things, yeah. And most of them don't work, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they claim to be obviously different mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. there's no truth in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm a bit upset about the fact that they base their sales approach mm -hmm. on people's vulnerability, mm -hmm. on people's uh, issues mm -hmm. and on uh, yeah, lack of confidence. Right. So they it's not ethical right. to start with and they claim things that they know that it's not right, right. but because they weren't interested in, in, in money or, or development or whatever yes. they are interested, yes. it's, 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 it's wrong. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But as if people are vulnerable in that field, especially mm -hmm. if they are ashamed of being interested in mm -hmm. that and they don't want to speak to anybody else about it. Yeah? So they are very isolated, especially women. Uh, tend to keep things like this for themselves because they think that nobody else around them right. have issues like So what you're saying already, so you're saying there's a number of areas here. One is what the information about what's available out there and for that to filter down and so people are aware of just the range of things out there and they can be informed about that. And then there's the whole thing around ethics, uh, well, around actually what is out there and lots of products being based purely basically mindful that lots of people have got fears, doubts and so on, that some of those products, many of the products, aren't great, they don't work, and but partly because of somebody's fear, I might just buy something online or whatever, yeah. and just, or whatever, just use it, hoping that I'm yeah, not yeah, engaging, yeah. right? Yeah, and people, when they are afraid, they make very, uh, they don't do the best decisions, mm -hmm. because in that moment, it's, it's, it comes from a negative place, it's right. not, yeah? And very often when they try many, many things, they almost try another or buy into something else. Right. Almost looking for confirmation that nothing helps and they won't be. I see. Mm -hmm. And I can yeah. imagine you've touched on this before, uh, already, that this thing that it can become a... Pattern, yeah. yeah it can Absolutely. become a pattern. And it's like chasing something that it's, yeah, unable, yeah, 
untouchable. Right. Well, a couple of things I just want to touch on before we close. One is, is there any other anything else that within your industry that you think that um, practitioners should be mindful um, uh, about? I mean, I would imagine, and I don't know, I am, I don't know that much about the industry. I'd imagine that your industry is one that's predominantly male. Mm, there is a big, uh, especially yeah. Right. There, there is obviously a big part of plastic surgeons where yeah. uh, probably ninety five percent are male doctors. Yeah. And then uh, in aesthetic medicine, there is a bit more female yeah. practitioners and more doctors, female doctors, but it's still male doctors. Yeah, doctors. because I guess that one of the things that anybody needs to be have that kind of mindfulness about how the aesthetic is important. I'm not saying that people don't, but um, I, it I seems to me that it's very, it's very deep, lots of this yeah. stuff, isn't it? So yeah. one's got to have that empathy as well as that understanding. Um, I guess that, you know, when we often think about um, uh, medicine or on the other side, you know, surgeons, what have you, um, sometimes it can seem stuff very much of the very the practical, we're just doing this, and I would imagine that the more it is that we can be empathetic, the better. I remember I was just, for example, coaching recently a young doctor, and I was so enchanted by the fact, so pleased by the fact that he was so aware of his role helping people. Um, of course, many people are, but he, he had such a rich heart. He, um, he, he was very mindful about how some of the pressures can sometimes mean that people aren't there and available and that patients don't feel that they're listened to. Is that something you'd like to see more, yes, see more yes, of? Yes, definitely. I think that's the, uh, you touch yeah, the core of it. It's just, it's all about the patient. Mm. And I think that sometimes we forget, sometimes the focus is drifted towards procedures or like I said, solutions right. Yeah, right. rather than the person. Right. And right. and once again it's um, and because it's such a deep and personal um, and intimate mm. issue usually uh, it demands a lot of um, Sensitivity. This is wonderful what you're saying. I think what you're saying is really, really fascinating. Two things just to quickly touch on. We haven't touched on the racing. Mm -hmm. And I think people will be fascinated a little bit about also your journey into this. I mean, how did you... Um, I guess it's quite an extraordinary journey for somebody so young. I mean, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, that, that you're great out there for your field because this person said... You, how, how And to achieve the things that you've achieved, I guess that lots of people looking in are very... Um, must be inspired by that um, for you to travel um, to, you're working here based in the heart of, I mean, presumably that's quite um, there's a lot presumably, has it been quite a journey? Yeah, it's been, it's been a long journey right. and uh, it was a many twists and turns right, right and, uh, and hearing it from you mm -hmm. it's really, really it's almost like this make me really happy because mm -hmm. when you are in it you don't see it. Mm -hmm. I just keep going. I just know that I want this or that I just one thing that I know that I cannot stop. Right. So when you start when when you when you were very young did you know that you wanted to be a doctor and, and did you and was that interest in how things look and so on was that there from a very early age? I had very difficult upbringing. Right. Yeah. My father died when I was three years old right. and I was born in Poland in the state of war in those colonies where we did not have much. Yeah. Right. So from a young age you learn how to really look after yourself mm -hmm. and and find ways to um, yeah, replace things that yeah, mm -hmm. are not available. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately as I to the death of my father and, and the difficult situation, I was deprived from love and care and attention. Mm -hmm. So I found the joy in discovery mm -hmm. and learning and getting to know the world more than the mysteries mm -hmm. and that's what kept me going and, and fascinated me. Obviously being surrounded by people like facing death in the very mm -hmm. early stage and then my mom health problems. Mm -hmm. Being a doctor was uh, I think one of the things I wanted to to, to not say experience but it was almost a, a way for me to see what it's 
there's a way to heal. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, what is the truth in our body? What is, mm -hmm. what is that all about? Mm -hmm. So that, that's the reason why I was attracted to it. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the creativity, the creativity, the, the art and, and the way of expressing myself mm -hmm. I was from beginning there. Right. And uh, medicine itself was a bit of a disappointment mm -hmm. for me because initially, yes, you find out about how body function, mm -hmm. but it's based on, the Western medicine is based on disease mm -hmm. and on problems. Mm -hmm. So the farther you go, the darker it gets. Mm -hmm. So uh, you really concentrate on, on medications, mm -hmm. on, on on aging, on on cancer, on mm -hmm. heart attacks, all of that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about the body, an amazing and, and, state and of body right, that can heal itself. Right. It's when you, as you're saying that, I thought then it's strangely it's often more, uh, maybe perhaps more about illness than it is about health. Yeah. Um, it's like the Eastern medicine. Uh, it's based on preventing. Mm -hmm. So you go to the doctor to keep your health mm -hmm. in the end. To to yeah to, pers to be healthy. Right. You go in the in the Western understanding of doctor. You go to doctor when something wrong with you. Right. When you fix it. Right. And that's where everything starts. Right. So you know what you're saying is so interesting. I mean, what you're saying is so interesting. I'm very tempted to stop the camera and to continue because you've already told us um, a lot. Um, I mean, it's been quite extraordinary what you said already. Um, there's this work that you do, people come here to the, the surgery, there's um, all of the mm -hmm. stuff that can be going on for somebody, the care, um, where we are, we're in a, a, an industry where, uh, in a world whereby how things look is very important, and then there's your own journey, which is really fascinating, of, you know, from loss very early on, and then that interest in health and so on, and then what you discovered when you looked into the realm of health. And then this last thing you've touched on, which is where we are perhaps in the West at the moment with our, in terms of health care. And I get the feeling that, um, well, I'd be very interested to explore with you how you think that the future of mm -hmm. well-being might well look. Um, and perhaps then talk about the other side, which is this, the race is. Yes, absolutely. Is, 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 and I'm, 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 I'm curious, is this... Well, we'll, we'll find out. Well, maybe that's a good place to, to tell to, to, to talk about that. But I'm intrigued about where that came from. Are people it's, intrigued by it too? Yeah, yes. It's the passion, passion is something that we cannot really describe. Right. We don't know what it is. Right. It's something inside of you right. that is like, it give you a nudge from time to time. Yeah? Right. And you are attracted, and it's just like you—it's so strong that you cannot, cannot ignore it. Yeah? Right. And I was always attracted to cars, and I didn't know why. Right. And it was something that, but more than the cars, is the sensation of freedom. Right. It's the feeling of moving so fast that you can leave everything behind. Right. That nothing to get to the place that nothing else matters. Right. Then you just going and moving. And right. it's, the, it's this sensation of freedom, it's, it's wonderful. Wow. And obviously through racing, through mm -hmm. Christ, it can manifest. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting and it's, it's as well uh, very challenging, yes. which I love. Right. Because that makes me question myself, makes right. me, push me to, pushes me to grow mm -hmm. and to, uh, yeah, to go farther and farther every day. So it's, it's fascinating, and as well with this, I can I got a lot of strength, a lot of strength in my work, mm -hmm. and as well, it did um, um, inspire not only ma me to do more and to do different things, mm -hmm. but as well other people, which I find absolutely yeah, amazing. Wow, wow, wow! Well, I'm going to pause it there. Um, I mean, it's just been a fascinating interview. There's so much there, and so much you've given me to, to think about and to perhaps maybe what I would maybe like to do perhaps in some future interviews um, is maybe pick up on some of these yes. individual topic areas. I think there's so many things here um, from self-esteem, um, maybe self-care, mm -hmm. um, there may well be and just a number of things on that be guided but you, some of these topics that you think it would be good for us to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to leave you to smile at the camera as we stop the camera. But for people who are looking to find you, what's the best way to, for people to find you if they watch so this? The best way is obviously through the internet. Yeah. We have a website with all information 
uh, is regarding the treatments and our clinic. Yeah. And uh, there's one website, my first website, which is uh, purely um, about me and, and the right. treatments, and it's Dr. Barbara Kubicka, yeah. .co UK. Yeah. And then uh, the second is the clinic, which I probably think you know, it's, it's much better and uh -huh. wider. It's a clinicbe.com. So clinic? Clinic B E. B E. Clinic B E dot com. Dot com. So clinic spelled normally clinic. C uh, yeah, clinic. Yeah. Clinic and B E dot com. Dot com. So people and can it find is that. exactly yeah. and then the name it's, uh, obviously it's quite interesting, mm -hmm. but what stands behind it's that uh, it's be beautiful, be happy. Oh. Um, be whatever you oh, need to like be, so that the B it's in the it's core. It's important, yeah. clinic B, so yeah. that... So and be I guess healthy, be everything what we can put, what we can address, it's in the B. Well, I think you've rounded that off really nicely, because I guess that's what the work really is, isn't it? And I like that bit when you're first of all talking about from the consultation, what, what, what is that journey about? And I guess that only when people have to begin the journey will they discover what that's about, or their possibilities once they are comfortable with how they look and how they feel. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to leave you to smile. Thank you so much. Thank you.